Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Math 1105 videos for Tallahassee Community College. My name is John Salick, and what I'm going to create here for you is a, a, I'm going to recreate what I do in the classroom. So you may want to watch these ahead of class. You may want to watch them after class if you didn't understand something and you need to see it reinforced. Or if for some reason you have to miss class, then even though I'd prefer you not miss class, this is a good way for you to hear what happened during the actual class, okay, to a degree. Uh, to me, there's nothing like actual attendance, but let's try it. Okay, this is section R5, which also has to do with supplement A. So when we're done with this material, you should be able to do your R5 homework and your R5 online quiz, and you should also be able to do the supplement A that I handed out in class to you. Okay, you don't have to turn in supplement A, that's just for your benefit. So if I'm solving this equation, the first thing I'm going to do is distribute, which will give me y squared minus 4y is equal to 45. Now, I recognize back from hopefully Math 1033 or whatever previous algebra course you took, this is a quadratic equation. And when we solve a quadratic equation, we put it in standard form. So I'm going to write this as y squared minus 4y minus 45 is equal to 0. This is called standard form because it's in descending power order equal to 0. Now, this expression factors. We can factor this as y minus 9 and y plus 5. But again, remember your old technique from Math 1033 or wherever you're coming to me from. When you have a trinomial in general, you factor it as the product of two binomials or you kind of revert it back to the FOIL method as some of you have been taught. Okay? So, if I have two expressions multiplied together to give me 0, that means and that means that either the first expression is 0 or the second expression is 0. If y minus 9 is 0, that means y is equal to 9. And if y plus 5 is equal to 0, y is equal to a negative 5. And we're done. Okay. Next problem, 3y squared minus 15 equals 0. Again, this is a quadratic equation. We have degree 2. But I want you to notice, in this equation above, we had a middle term. In other words, there was a y term. Here, there is no y term. There is no middle term. Whenever there is no middle term, the best approach to use to solve this quadratic equation is, the, is what is called the square root property. And to use the square root property, we have to get y squared by itself first before we can apply the property. So, 3y squared is equal to 15. I added 15 to both sides of the equation. When I divide by 3, y squared is equal to 5. Now, what I've basically done here, it's just like when you paint a room. You prime it to make things, you prime it to get things going. If y squared is equal to 5, I can apply the square root property. And what the square root property tells me is my answers to this equation, y, those are my answers, can be found by doing two things. It's called the square root property. So we take the square root of the constant, and there's one other thing you need to remember to do. You have to put a plus or minus in front of it and the reason is because there are two answers, the positive answer and the negative. Quadratic equations usually have two answers. With the square root property, the plus or minus is imperative. Now, if you were putting this into course compass, course compass always says, you know them, uh, write your answer as two, you know, write your answer separated by commas. So let me readjust here. So in course compass, you would write the square root of 5, put a comma, and then opposite of the square root of 5. Now that's not mandatory for me, but if you were putting it into course compass, that is what they'd want. 
And I want to caution you, don't put the comma under the radical with the 5 or it's going to mark it wrong. Okay, I'm going to continue on to the next video that's still section R5 and supplement A.